Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show uh, and an impromptu live stream. Sorry, we were supposed to be going at eight, so I, I want to extend my apologies to Ben, Lockie and Lox. Um, I fell asleep putting my son down, so that's why <laughs> uh, we're, we're late, so apologies. Um, but we're here, obviously, the nominations were announced earlier on today for the EFL Championship, well, the EFL in general, Championship League 1, League 2. Um, but we're here, obviously, to talk about the nominations for the championship. Um, Leeds United have a vested interest in this, um, in every single category, which is sweet for me. Um, Ipswich, um, obviously, have Kieran McKenna up for manager of the season and uh, Dewsbury Hall is up for player of the season. So I thought... I would Dewsbury Hall get... plays for Ipswich, I'll take that. No, 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 no. I was just... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, though, actually, Ben? Are, are you surprised to see just McKenna in there and nobody else? From an um, Ipswich perspective? I suppose Leif Davis could have been in the player of the season, couldn't he? But, um, look, we'll, we'll discuss the three that are in there. I think they're all very valid in their own picks, that that top three as well. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. Well, let's um, let's get stru stuck straight into it then. As you can tell, my bearings are all over the gaff. Manager of the season, the three nominations are Kira McKenna, Liam Rossinia, and Daniel Farker. Is any is is anyone surprised to see Rossinia in there? Especially when yeah, go go talk on it, Ben, because I've seen <laughs> um, Oscar, my good friend Oscar, actually put through a host of candidates that maybe should have been in the conversation before Rossinia. So what what do you make to him being included? Um, I mean, we can debate the other two, but I, you know, I like Rossinia a lot. I like Hull, but they had a decent spend. And I think if they're not in the playoffs, he, he shouldn't be in there. And I think if QPR finish 16th or above, I'd have the QPR manager, Sifuentes, above him. Mm. I think if Sheffield Wednesday survive, I'd have the Wednesday manager above him. I'd have Carlos Corbron above him, whatever. And Good. if Preston are one game from the playoffs, look, they've got to get in. But if Preston finish above Hull, Ryan Lowe's done a better job than Rossini on less resources would be my take. Yeah, do you... Uh, Lockie, do you put it down mm. to the, just the football that he's playing because it is pleasing on the eye but yeah. I sort of agree with with Ben because I, I speak to um, a whole City fan regularly on the White Rose Rivals and he, he said to me like if they don't get the playoffs post January it's actually an unsuccessful season because of the amount of mm. bodies they brought in um, the guy mm. from Burnley um, obviously Carvalho Giles these are big signings that will be on decent money so it's a bit surprising they've got, they've got a really um Good 11 of Hull. You know, when we played them, I was looking at their 11. It's really, yeah. The lads from Liverpool as well, uh, Morton and... I don't know name. Moran. Tyler Morton, good yep. player, by the way. Good player, very good yeah. player. Very good against us as well. Yeah, very good 11. Um, I was shocked at the 10th. Uh, I genuinely were. I think that's, like you said, Ben, I, th I don't... Are they overachieving? Are they underachieving? I think they're doing fine. I don't think they're doing amazing. But I think, like you said, Joe, Rossini does have this kind of exciting style of play that... Obviously, fans like to see in the championship. You know, it's kind of fresh. Um, that's definitely helping. He's obviously a young manager who has a lot of potential and will probably do great things in the game if he chooses the right jobs. But he has a really good squad. And Ben mentioned it. Carlos Corbran, for me, he's been quietly doing excellent. I was looking at the players they brought in. And as far as I'm aware, I don't think they spent a penny. All free agents, all loans, I believe. And when you, when you consider that Hull, I think they spent about seven or eight million all in all. Some decent players brought Philogene and obviously and um, uh, Anua who played against us it was very decent. I think Carlos Corbran sitting in fifth fairly comfortably for a majority of the season now. I think he's got to be in the conversation. Obviously, yeah, Danny Rawls doing an excellent job. I think since he came in at Sheffield Wednesday as well, I really like him. There's a lot of options there. I think it's a strange one. You can credit Rossini. I think he's done well. I genuinely do. I think he's done really well. He was good against us. Um, and when I've watched them, they look play quite good football. But there's quite a lot of options in there that you could yeah. go for. And obviously, Lox will tell you, oh, I don't know, actually, she'll agree or not. But Maresca, <laughs> I know his opinions changed great, on Maresca, mate. But Trust me. <laughs> they're still up there with us. Farker's getting it, you know, if he's yeah. in the conversation. Yeah. And obviously, McKenna's the 
I think we're all going to probably agree that he's the one, isn't he? He's unbelievable. But there's definitely, well, maybe not Joe's face there, maybe Joe disagrees. No, but, um, no, you'd be surprised. Um, there's a lot <laughs> of candidates for sure. Um, Rossini's a good coach and he will do really good things, I believe. But I just, Carlos Corbraham for me has to be in there. And yeah. He's unbelievable. Yeah. He has done, and, and and we know how wild this this season's been with the top four being as far as they are. So like, and we always say in a normal season you'd already be top. Well, in a normal season, West Brom might be challenging for the auto spots. Do you know what I mean? So that just just proves how good of a job he's done as well. Look, are you surprised to see? I know right now he's not flavour of the month with you and maybe a lot of Leicester fans due to the drop in form. But you're surprised to see. Enzo not in the selection because this is where for me awards getting nominated for pre the end of the season is a bit mad because if Enzo <laughs> now goes on a run and you finish top, yes, you had a big blip, but you could say we smashed it at the start, had a horrendous blip, but guess what? He brought it back round, we won the league, and it's oh well Enzo's actually done well. So where do you stand on him not even being nominated, mate? <laughs> I'm not surprised. I think it's like you said, it's all to do with timing. I think if if these nominations came out six weeks ago, he'd be in there. And I think uh, if we win the league, you know, and the nominations came out, then he'd be in there. I think it's just because of the uh, the drop off. That's the only reason why he's not there. Um, you know, you've bottled a 17 point lead, you know, and um, that's not good. So uh, I think that's why he's not there. So I'm, I'm not a surprised one bit. I, I didn't expect him to be there. I agree with the lads, though. Um, you know, Kira McKenna, Farker, I would have had somebody else then as, as the third. Um, I think Hull are actually underperforming. It might be a little bit harsh, but with the squad no, they've I, got, I, I think agree. they should be in the top six. Um, so that's a weird one. But yeah, Enzo not being there, mate, I'm not surprised one bit. I think it's I think it's about right with where we're at. But I, as you said, if we win the next seven, the last seven, um, you'd, you'd say he deserves to be there, wouldn't you? So yeah, yeah. it's tough. Yeah, you definitely would. I thought you were going to say it's because the EFL hate Leicester. I thought that was going to be your <laughs> angle that you might have took, to be honest. I bet it did cross your mind, didn't it? I Joe, I, Joe I said in about November, for Maresca to win manager of the year, he had to beat 106 points. That was So that was going to be my kind of barometer because they were, they were looking like they were going to win the title by a mile. And yeah. the only thing that would <clears> put him <throat> over the top was a record-breaking title win. And then, of course... The, the, the drop off means it's probably going to go elsewhere, isn't it? Which is yeah. a horrible handed, horrible standard to hold someone in their first year <laughs> of management to. But he had he had 50 points in his first 23 games or something yeah. stupid like that, didn't he? Yeah. I, th I think you're right as well. Like, if, if Leicester won the league on goal difference, let's say, you know, and people will say that's his first full season in charge of a team and he's won the league, but. Again, it's always, and it is a shame, but it's always in the back of your mind, you know, we Leicester were 17 points clear, you know, and you've won the league on goal difference. So there'll always be that in, in the back of my mind. So um, so even if we won the league, mate, you know, if it is marginal, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the guy we're about to talk about, it deserves it more than him anyway. So, yeah, yeah. And look, we, we'll we'll talk about who our, who our selection would be. Um, now, before I give my selection, I, have, I obviously have to give props to to the guy who who uh, is a close second and that's Daniel Farker because I, I I I do think Kira McKenna deserves top spot just because of um the the comparison between the three relegated sides and Ipswich um and the momentum that they've been on and then you think oh well the momentum carries them but then it we're now six games from the end, so that momentum would have stopped. It's just he's just a great coach. Do you see what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, and <laughs> everyone keeps saying they're lucky, and I know this. Every time I hear it, I'm like, Ben will be fuming, Ben will be fuming, oh, it's but just, it's, it's not. just, la it's just yeah, laughable now, though. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just laughing. Yeah, yeah. It's, You're just... it's ridiculous now, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> I know, mate, I know, but... um. Just on Daniel Farker, I mean, he also was, was dealt a, a bit of a dodgy hand in August. I have to say that. I know some will say, well, what do you mean dodgy hand? You've still got a huge squad and you've still got expensive players like Rutter who cost 30-odd million and stuff, which I do hear. But um, we had a lot of players that, that probably promised him to his face that they would stick around. And then their agents in the background were, were engineering moves 
That happened with a few players. Um, he had non tour saying he didn't want to play for the football club anymore. Um, and then pre the international break, non tours probably the best form he's been in in a little in a lead shirt. Even when he had flashes in the prem, it wasn't as consistent and that as that. He's brought Dan James to. I mean, Swansea, Dan James, I would argue, that we didn't really see any of. And I, I put a lot of that down to his, his man management. He told us as well, he told us way back when, when we were all panicking about this this points gap, look at the table on game 40. That's literally came out of his mouth. We're now at game 40 and we're second in the table. So it's like he knows this league. Um, he knows what's needed to get out of it. So, um, yeah, I'm not surprised, obviously, to see him in the running, but I do... I do think he'll he'll miss out. Um, Lockie, I'll come to you, obviously, being a fellow Leeds fan and, and knowing first hand just how good of a job Daniel's done. It, it's amazing, isn't it, mate? It's really impressive. I think we're all, in the summer, we were all obviously recovering from a horrific two years we had previous. But the first thing he did, and this is not part of the EFL, don't care about this, obviously, but just calming everyone down and making sure, you know, we were all fine in that way, kind of like a father figure to everyone. You know, he came in, the first thing he said was, we're going to do our best. We're going to we're going to get a team together. And that was important. We never had that feeling in the last two years. Everything felt disjointed. So he brought the fan base together. He brought the belief in. And what I, you look at that team, one of the first games against Birmingham, which I've sent you before, Joe, that team against Birmingham that we played, I think there was only Ampadu in there. There was no Sinistera, there was no Somerville, you know, there, we had a lot of issues at the start. It wasn't great um, to where we are now. And the fact that and you have to back the recruitment, the recruitment's been really well. But the fact that Daniel Farker has managed the situation um, to the point where he did, because you look at our team or the squad a week before the end of the window, and it wasn't good in terms of, you know, <laughs> Nonto was refusing to play. You know, Rutter hadn't found his form yet. We we're still not unsure about him. Ampadu had just come in. You know, I don't even think Rodon was in at that point. We had a centre back partnership of Creswell and Cooper. We were struggling at that point. You know, Jamie Shackleton left. played at right back. Shackleton playing well. on the wing yeah, and yeah. right back. Like that yeah. was the situation at one point. I just think he's done a really good job to bring the fan base together and get the best out of these players that went through a lot last year. They really did. Judging Rutter coming to England when. He said himself he wasn't even sure if he was ready um, and he wasn't he came into a situation where he couldn't speak the language you know he had sam allardyce there who literally said to him i can't play you're not confident enough and then then what you know and this year what he's done is he's, he's put his foot down he's worked hard daniel fark has got behind him backed him in difficult periods and he's done really well and you look at that oh sorry it was that goal against ipswich that that was his first one that was his yeah. introduction at the start of the season after that he flew and I could go around every player. Somerville had glimpses in the Premier League, but what he's done is he's found that kind of maturity in Somerville and, and really brought the emphasis on him now. He's probably told him, you are the main man and that's fine. That's not pressure. That's, that's Enjoy it. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. Nonto situation. We could talk about that for hours. Dealt with it. Nonto's now, well, he's injured, but was playing excellent yeah. football. The midfield, the recruitment in there, the, how he's controlled Archie Gray and made him into this excellent young player. Centre backs, maturity, Ampadu as captain, Pascal Strauch as captain. Players stepping up, and he's the hub of all that. He's the part of it. He's the leader in the teams, Daniel Farker. He's done this before his experience, and the fact that he's dealt with these situations, look, he's had the money. He's obviously had the resources more than most. I'm not denying that. But with that comes its own problems. And as a fan base, I'm happy. And that's all you that's all football really is at the end of the day. If you're happy, you're happy, and we are. So credit to him. Genuinely, I, I genuinely don't know much managers that we could have attracted at this level who could have done a better job. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Because for a period of time we were linked, like with um, Brendan Rodgers before he went up <laughs> yeah. to before he went up to Celtic, and uh, you look now and think, I mean, yeah, we got the best man for the job, didn't we? Ultimately, this guy's been there, done it, wore the t-shirt. I always say it like yeah. tongue in cheek. He made the t-shirt. He didn't just wear it. He made the t-shirt. And uh, if Leeds go up as champions, he'll be the first manager to win it three times, I believe. Him and Mick McCarthy have won it twice. So, um, yeah, and it's still on. It's still on. Obviously, it's a it's a three horse race now for the title, not just for the autos. We're all still in. Uh, ben, you, you you know loads about Daniel Farker, obviously, having been uh, been the goat of championship. Um, 
uh, content, mate. But how do you compare this job he's done with the Norwich job? That is the perfect question, Joe. Good. That's why you're the goat, mate. See, um, I'm good at this. See, I'm good at this. <laughs> um, I don't want to... I've got to tell the truth. I know yeah. I'll be unpopular in the chat, but I feel a little bit Roy Keane about Daniel Farker <laughs> and Leeds. It's his as job. in, it's his job. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, like you say, a manager who's won the championship twice with an excellent squad at Leeds, huge club, big commercial revenues, great crowds, great home support, amazing away support. And compared to okay compared to the second norwich title win very very similar even down to campwell and wendia yeah. agitating for moves compared to the first norwich title win nowhere near that was utterly spectacular they went up from 14th to yeah. first i think it, amazingly it was ipswich 12 they then finished bottom Leeds 13th they hired bielsa and finished third. Yeah, norwich yeah. 14th and they they won the damn thing so um, as much as I can understand, if you're a Leeds fan, being very gooey-eyed towards Farker and very excited about this season, because he has done exactly what he needed to for Leeds, my my take, if I can make a, I don't know, as a relevant point, if Ipswich were 12, I would be saying, OK, McKenna, well done, into the championship, nice and stable, go and build next season. If Leeds were 12, Farker would be being sacked. Mm -hmm. That's the difference in expectation. And if, I don't think Leeds will drop out of the top two. If Leeds drop out of the top two and lose in the playoffs, that's a complete failure. So the um, expectation is very binary with parachute teams. You've got to get promoted or you failed, basically, haven't you? Mm -hmm. So all I would say on Farker, brilliant championship manager. He's done excellent with Leeds. But it's a failure if he doesn't deliver promotion. And he might do that next season. Look, I think I think you're finishing the top two, but um, I'm not quite as high on him doing this spectacular job. I think it's merely competent and what you should be doing with that lead squad and setup. If that's not going to make me grossly um, I, I, unpopular in the I chat. agree, Ben. I think it's, for me and obviously Joe, it's that feeling, I think. Obviously, you'll understand Ipswich and Locks understand with Leicester. It's that what we were like in the summer and how we were all feeling after that year, literally hardly winning a game for two years and getting battered most weeks, to now just enjoying watching football and these players and expressing themselves. So, yeah, it's definitely, obvious, yeah, he should be up there for sure. I completely agree. It's more just, a, I think, a personal feeling being a Leeds fan yeah. that kind of brings uh, That's that all bias, it is on these it? awards yeah. as well, isn't it? It's just a yeah. who's your favourite, basically, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. basically. <laughs> Emotional, emotional attachment to him, of course. Like I get it, um, and I do sort of uh, agree with what you were saying as well. Like he's expect, he's he was expected to do this, mm -hmm. um, for sure. Because even when things weren't going well, a lot of the Leeds United fans were saying, "Look, with this squad, we should be doing what Leicester are doing, what Ipswich are doing." So mm -hmm. there is no excuses. So, like you say, it is binary. Um, Lockie. Farker, uh, Locks, sorry. Sorry, these two L's. Locks, Farker for you. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, I mean, I remember the start of this, well, way before the start of the season in the summer, mate, when we, obviously we were both looking for new managers at the time. And I think um, Leicester were never really linked with Farker at all, actually. But, um, you know, I remember when you you got Farker, you were over the moon, mate, and you were like, you know, look, look at history. He is the best man for the job, you know? So... Yeah. Um, I think uh, I, I do. I do hear where Ben's coming from in terms of you know he's done his job. It's what he's expected to do. It's what he should have done where they are right now. Um, and yeah, it is actually weird. You know how how binary it is. Like Ben said, you know if you do drop out the out the top two and you and you don't get promoted, there will be Leeds fans. Not all of you, obviously, but there will be Leeds fans calling for his head. Um, <laughs> so uh, you know, and and if you win the league. That Leeds fans will be saying he's the you know the, the best championship manager ever. So yeah, it's um we, we don't know until the end of the season, you know. We we really don't know. But I think, you know, for now, mate, he, he's done a good job in terms of just, just and McKenna as well, in terms of just catching Leicester, really. I know we played a big part in that on, you know, bottling it, but you know, you, you both both Ipswich and Leeds have had to stay relentless basically all season um to even have a chance of catching us and and you have. So yeah, yeah. fair play. Good man, good man. And um right. I think everyone is everyone giving the nod to Kieran McKenna here. 
100%. Yeah. It's, that's a no-win situation for me, so I'll abstain and let you three decide. <laughs> well, I think we're all going to... So I was going to come to you, Ben, and, and for you to tell us just how good of a job he's he's done for Ipswich this season. Well, it's, it's, I mean, it's staggering. It, to be within... 20 points of the parachute teams was incredible, but they've all been in, they've all been amazing. Look at the look at the points tallies, and I know it's a race at the end of the day, and you just got to finish first. And it, you know, if you finish first, what was it like Cardiff or something in 2008? Won it with 79 or something like that, and everyone's already on 87. But they won the race. They were the best team of the 24 in that in that year, and that that's the deal. We get obsessed with the points, don't we? Yeah. Um, but no, it's it's unbelievable the interesting thing is if Ipswich finish third and lose in the playoffs and you're giving McKenna the manager of the year what if Corberon then wins the playoffs yeah. Yeah, yeah, do you know what I mean yeah. that's where I agree with you Joe it'd be be folly Corberon should then be manager of the year shouldn't he so you know it's it's, it's a bit weird it being now but it's all fun um debate isn't it yeah I think for me I think the most impressive thing is like I it almost feels Bielsa like in terms of yeah, he has that, changed. Totally agree. Yeah. Look, look at Morsi, and I think yeah. of Luke Ayling under Bielsa. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, yeah. And and the facts are as well. Like when they're not coached by Kira McKenna, what will their level be? Because we've seen as <laughs> Leeds United fans. I don't want to think about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, do you feel then, Ben, if you don't go up this season and he moves on, let's say, gets an opportunity to manage in the Premier League, is it is there a f sense of feeling like we need it to happen now, or we get relegated, mate? We get thirty <laughs> points next season. Back in, so, Lee Davis, back in, back in League One, I reckon. Yeah. Um, Lockie, give us your thoughts on McKenna, mate. Yeah, you mentioned Bielsa there. And obviously, I'm not a Leicester fan, so uh, uh, Ipswich fan, so I can't really be part of that. How that feels, really. But just from watching and the excitement in each game, and I remember under Bielsa, away, it was it was never over, was it? Even in games where this is in the Premier League as well. You know, our first game was a four-three against Liverpool, and then the game <laughs> after that, we won four-three. It, it, yeah. it was the way it was, and that's the enjoyment. That's what you watch sport for, isn't it? It's that that enjoyment that you know your team's always going to be in it, and they're always going to fight and yeah, like just watching what they're doing and seeing what they're doing, it's really impressive and inspiring. And there is similarities there. We were a team that, but probably bar Pablo Hernandez aside, a bunch of players that weren't really known for being great. They were all right. They were fine. We finished, what was it, 13th or 14th the season before? And then to compete in that season as well, by the way, who had... What was but it, it was the first Villa game. Side. It was the first... Yeah. They were brilliant in the first game. And you're like, yeah, against... what the hell has he done? Uh, honestly, I was lucky enough to be there for that one. And I, I sat with my mate, I went, oh, oh. it was almost too good to be true because yeah. we were not used to that. <laughs> we were we were generally expecting Stoke would just come down. We were thinking, take a draw maybe, but mm. yeah, we, we battered him. And that's kind of the similarity. You're getting these players and they're massively overachieving for each other, for the team. And it's interesting what you said about the individual players and how there's none in there. And it was the same for Leeds. There's not really one you could have said, I mean, when Bielsa was here, that was that standout player. They're all working together. And that's why they score so many goals from different players because everyone's feeling it and everyone's in that moment. And it's, it's really good to see for, from a neutral point of view. Obviously, for it's horrible because we just kind of, you know, want you to go away so we can win, win the league or finish in top two. But you're not going to. I Mate, we've been that. crap for 15 years. Have a, have, you know, <laughs> give us a chance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's how I felt when we were doing well. Yeah, I think as well, like, um, the squad building's really good, though, as well, Ben, right? Good like, it, yeah, if you if you look at the players that they're bringing in, like, like say, whenever I watch Chip Switch, and I watch a lot of them now because of the jeopardy and the running and whatnot, and it makes for great content, but every time they bring someone off the bench, I'm like, oh, this guy came on before and, and found one, and it's and like... Joe, the, we, we need to be self-aware enough to um, admit that all the accusations the parachute team gets that was us in league one we had the yeah, most yeah. money in league one we no. bullied everyone in the transfer market and had the best squad so yeah. we have to be self-aware enough to admit that all the barbs that you'll be getting this season that was that was us last season and mm. you know we've probably had a championship squad in league one but but you're right the momentum is then then taking you taking you through hasn't it yeah yeah, for sure. Well, the chat the chat uh, agrees. Uh, 56% say McKenna should get 
um, should get the uh, the top prize for manager of the year. Farka, 44%, and a massive 0% for Liam <laughs> Rossini. That's wild. <laughs> Not even one. Not even yeah, one. What, what an echo yeah, chamber we're to. in here, Joe. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's mad. Not even 1%. Um, right, let's talk about player of the year then. The nominees. Um, yeah, I feel like I've got a, a gold thing here. And the nominees are... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Kieran Dewsbury Hall, Crescencio Somerville, and Sammy Schmodix. I'm going to come to you first of all, Locks. Put forward your case for your pick, my man. Oh, I mean, I'm not going to give you much of an argument here, mate. I'll tell you why. Because I, I remember when we did our um, preview to the Leicester Leeds game, we spoke a little bit about the the battle between Somerville and Dewsbury Hall for player of the season because I think everyone expected even then that them two would be in there. Um I don't know someone will have to tell me who votes for this and when does the voting end? Does anyone know? I will try find out for you mate while you because you know for me whichever of the two and I am ruling out Smodix here unfortunately um sorry to disappoint anyone who, who thought he should get it but um I think the winner of the league, whoever wins the league, obviously Ipswich could win it too, but whoever finishes higher, let's say, out of the two teams, you know, whoever gets promoted, probably deserves it a little bit more just because of the honour. I think it's been very close. Obviously, if you look at the numbers, I think Somerville edges it. Um, but, I mean, Dewsbury Hall, uh, he's got uh, 11 goals, 13 assists. Uh, I think Somerville's on 17 and 8. So, it's close, mate. It's close. I think, but you know, Dewsbury Hall is, is the man that kind of, can pull can create something out of nothing for Leicester. Um and it's been like that for a lot of the season. He he does disappear. He does disappear at times. I do uh say he takes after his his golfing buddy James Madison on that part. But um <laughs> you know he, he had a good performance the other day. So you know we know he's we know he's still about you know that, that type of player in there somewhere. Um but yeah I can't call it mate. Obviously I would prefer Dewsbury Hall to win it. And in my head I think he, you know, from my heart, sorry, I think he deserves it more than Somerville. But, you know, I'm not going to shut down any argument against that because Somerville's mm -hmm. been sensational. Um, and I remember at the start, that, you know, I remember before the season when you still had Sinny at the club, you said, you know, Sinister is going to be the best yeah, uh, championship player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when he left, you said, Somerville's going to, and I was like, get lost, mate. But obviously <laughs> that's, you know, that's actually come true. So fair play. Yeah. Um but yeah, I can't pick between them, mate. I'll say Dewsbury Hall, of course. I'll I'll back him, but um, it could go either way. Just having a look here, it said the voting process for the awards involves a panel of experts, journalists and football professionals who cast their votes to determine the winners and the winners are announced on April the 23rd, um, which is okay. the week before the season finishes. Um, you might have I, just got beat by yeah. Southampton and, you know... You know, I, I, about that. You know what, mate? I'm going to say, you know, I know... Obviously, they're experts, you said, and former professionals, whatever. It's just but me, I, mate. It's me. Again, well, I, I, yeah, I think this decision might, may potentially also get clouded by the poor run that Leicester went on, potentially. You know, I, I think it was hard not, to, it was hard to look past him in terms of the nomination, but that poor run of form and, and a poor run for him as well, by the way, performance wise. Um, that may have swinged it in in some of those in some of those favour, but I'm interested to see see if anyone uh, would would go with uh, Smodix. Yeah, it, do you know what as well? I think um, Tom Cleverley made the claim after the game as well when we played Watford. He said they've got the best player in the league in Somerville as well. So I don't know, and I think Rossini had some quite nice things to say as well. So I don't know if was he not playing um, to his base there after maybe, just getting a good draw maybe. against you Could boys? Been. Yeah. yeah, potentially Ben. <laughs> Potentially, um, come on then, Ben. You're a neutral in this one because I'm going to go Somerville, and I know Lockie would go Somerville. So, how do you see it, mate? Um, I have notes. <laughs> good man, good man. Um, <laughs> just a few honourable mentions. Armstrong, Adam Armstrong yeah, has yeah. 31 goal contributions, and he's playing wide right. A game where another great player in another parachute team, though. Um, Whitaker for. Plymouth, I think. Um, obviously, yeah. they've dropped off badly and he's not been very good for a few months. Has 26 goal contributions. I think if Jack Clark hadn't got injured, um, I think maybe we'd be talking about him. Certainly, Josh Sargent, if he'd done what he'd done for Norwich in the first half of the season, his numbers are off the charts good. Um, Leif Davis, I mentioned, but you were all very yeah. kind to Kieran McKenna, so I'll park that one for a second. <laughs> 
Gabriel Sara as well for yeah. Norwich. Um, I'm not just saying it because it was kind of requested, but you tell me, what is harder, scoring 23 goals for Blackburn or being really good on the wing for Leeds or in number 10 for Leicester? So there is an argument that what Smodic has done, if this is an individual award, is actually the most impressive thing because Blackburn haven't been very good for large you know, parts of this season. And I, um, someone could put it in the, in the chat what percentage of his goals they've scored. I would argue that Smodic's value to Blackburn is almost greater than any other player's value to their club in the entire, the entire division. You know, um, so Somerville as well. I mean, there's an argument he should win, but it was very concentrated, Joe. I had a look. 17 goal contributions in 18 games. It was very impressive from October through to the start of January. Yeah. What I'm saying is there's no standard, there's no Buendia or Mitrovic this season, is there? Where it's, everyone's mm -hmm. like, oh, he's going to win and that's fine. Um, Dewsbury Hall is an absolutely class player, obviously. Um, I think um, I think sometimes we get down on our English players, especially when they swagger around left-footed with their <laughs> socks rolled down. I think that... Mm -hmm. um, that acquires some heat, doesn't it? But he's a he's a class player. He's probably if you had to sign a player from the championship, he's probably the one that would cost the cost the most money. Um, so I'll I'll bat it around to the boys, but I think there's no standout. And as much as Somerville and Dewsbury Hall are, you know, higher ceiling players than Smodic, I think what Smodic has done is arguably much harder to do than what um Somerville and Dewsbury Hall have done, but we don't live in a galaxy where Somerville plays up front for Blackburn, do we? So, no, no, yeah, fair, you know, he might have fair. done exactly what Smodic has done, but yeah. we, we don't know that. Anyway, I'll pass it back. Yeah. What did, um, did what's his face, Ben Brayton Diaz? Because obviously he did a similar sort of job at Blackburn, right? Like, and was he ever like play, player of the year? Or? No, he wasn't. No. no. Um, and I, I, I take your point. He, he used to play off the left, didn't he? And just yeah, come yeah, in and yeah. score every week with a curling right footed <laughs> goal and um, was doing really big things for the Chile and international team. Don't think he ever got 23 goals. No. Somebody, somebody no. check in the, check in the chat. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. No again, no, Still no crazy numbers. Yeah. No standout candidate for me really, but Somerville, Dewsbury Hall, very impressive players. Smodic, very impressive season. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Look, where are you at, Lockie, with it? I, I assume yeah. Somerville, right? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I will say that. But the thing is, the lads are right. It's so difficult to say who's been the best player, who's been the most valuable player to their team is kind of the, the question, right? You know, some of Can the I ask you a quick question? In... Go on. Genuinely, mm. if we're doing our end of... is Right, this is the end of the season, okay. and we're doing player of the season... Just Leeds fans, does he get your pick? No. That's the point, isn't it? And that's, Who are you I was going for? You're going to go Yeah, Jordan. Rodon, Ampadu, uh, these. And that's yeah. the thing about these awards, right? They do favour attacking players because they're the, yeah, 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 the flair course. players, they're the numbers. But for me, I just think in games where we've always had a goal scoring threat, but, you know, we've not probably scored as many chances as we probably should. We've missed a lot of chances. Cree has, like Ben mentioned, has. I think after the Cardiff game, the first game of the season, he didn't get a goal or assist for six, seven games. And he had a period recently, until the last few weeks. So he has, he has had areas where he's not been that consistent. Actually, in terms of, you know, his stats, goals and assists per, <clears throat> like in games, I think Rutter's been more consistent in that. He's, he's always constantly been getting a goal or assist. But as an actual consistent player, I, I don't think Rodon's had a bad or quiet game. Mm -hmm. um, so if, it's weird. Because I think you've got to look at the the defenders as well in these things, and they're quite quietly underrated in these things. You know, Greaves at, at Hull, I think, is an excellent centre back as well. The 20, 24 years old is quite young. There's a lot mm. of players there that don't get their, you know, there'll be loads of centre midfielders that do their quietly do their job really well every week. They won't get the plaudits. So it's an interesting discussion. This look in terms of, but I know most Leeds fans will say Somerville because he has kind of been our player in that moment where you needed him. You know, the way in which you can just you know, on that left side, when he gets the ball 1v1, he's going to take him on. He's going to have a shot, win a penalty or get a crossing. And there's that inevitability about him when he's on it. That he, I think if we're saying who's probably the best player before the season, you, you know, you'd probably say Drew's Hall and Somerville, right? Just based on that. But 
in but Ben's right in terms of impact on their team. Schmodic scoring that many goals, and even Wicker at Plymouth, two teams that are not great. The numbers are ridiculous. So it is a tough one, obviously, because I am extremely biased. <laughs> I just <laughs> It, some of those give me so many happy memories this season. And again, I go back to last year and where I was and the way him and even Rutter, you know, just the enjoyment of watching these players play for your football team is something that makes me say them. Um, yeah. But it's good. It's a good discussion. They're all top players. Jules Paul, obviously a top player. I believe Lox was he wanted by Liverpool before the season. Was there something there, I believe? Yeah, Liverpool. I think there was yeah, talk yeah. of Arsenal Brighton, as well. Yeah, he's going to go on United, Denver. didn't he, in the summer, I reckon? If but this is the calibre, right? Yeah. So they're all up there. So, yeah, yeah. I will say some of them just because I kind of have to. But um, some really good mentions in there. Uh, yeah, like I'll go Sarah is a ridiculous player as well. Gabriel Sarah, yeah. what assists? 11 goals and 11 assists for Norwich. Brilliant. Central midfield, ridiculous. Yeah. And there's probably loads of defensive midfield players that have been really sorry. Uh, is it Sheaf? Sheaf is really, yeah, I was going to yeah. say, yeah, really good. Doing his job every week, performing really well. But they don't get the plot, it's silly, so... I'll go with I'll go with Somerville, of course. Yeah, Joe, can yeah, I, I mean, ask you a question quickly? A hypothetical yeah. one. If Somerville hadn't kicked the ball for Leeds this season and Jaden Anthony had played all the games, how many points fewer would Leeds have than they have right now? I think Somerville's better than Anthony, but we haven't seen That's enough. not the question I asked you though, mate. <laughs> <laughs> with it, Leeds would have been all right. If yeah, no, some no. of them have been hurt all, all season, wouldn't they? Do you know what I mean? In terms of yeah, the impact yeah, yeah. to the... I mean, some of them's a brilliant player, you know. Yeah. There's no denying that. But um, it w- it's not it the been... impact on the team award. It's the who's the best yeah. player award. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. But So I just wanted to put that there. No, and I think as well, mate, it would have been interesting had Sinistera stayed what would have happened with Somerville because that was... Well, Joe, was... I was present in the stadium for the one game where it was Rute, Piru, Sinistera and Nonto and it was yeah. bloody terrifying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sinistera was, uh, yeah, different gravy. Mm. Um, yeah, um, still injured though now, I think, or came back, I don't know. Anyway, he's a turncoat, forget about him. Lox, I know you've got a, you've got a dip soon, mate, so um, you were chuckling away in the chat as well. Uh, were you getting a bit of great? Because I can't lie, there is a massive Leeds bias, as you'd imagine, on this channel, because we've got 77% for Somerville, 17% for Smodics, and just 6% for Dewsbury Hall, which I think it should be yeah, a hell mate. of a lot closer, if I'm honest. <laughs> but, um, it's not an unreasonable take to have Somerville first. I don't... Yeah. I, I think you could be reverse um, <laughs> reverse snobbery against your poor Leeds fans here, Joe. Yeah, yeah, no, there were a few things I was laughing at, mate. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I said that, uh, you know, I'll back Dewsbury Hall, but I wouldn't argue against Somerville, and I got called deluded for that, so I'm not sure what he was listening to. I also, I've also, i also been told that Leicester fluked a title in 2016, which is always nice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so uh, if, if Leicester fluked a title just because the other teams weren't that good, you know, then I suppose Leeds are fluked. Don't fight, mate. Leicester. Don't fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't fluke a, a, a title, can you? The, the greatest honest. title win in Premier League history, yeah. Yes. 38 game <laughs> fluke. Yeah, yeah. 38 <laughs> games, exactly, mate. Um, well, yeah, we mate. will... We we will. Uh, Locks, do you want to dip now before we do the young player, mate? Um, you, yeah, you I've not got anyone in this one. Anyway, you, are, you don't have a dog in the fight, do you? You don't have a but, dog in the fight. Archie Gray, I think, mate. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I've I've taken the mick online at a few Leeds fans for saying he's better than Bellingham and all this. And uh, I think that is still a little bit of a stretch at the minute. But um, but no, no doubt future England international and... I saw some weird rumour today about Real Madrid or something, which was... Don't, mate. It came from Graham Bailey. Don't don't, don't listen to it. Don't listen to it. Um, (laughs) But, uh, but, yeah. What about your man Jordan James, though? Plays for the Welsh international side. Yeah, you know me, mate. I I don't properly follow Wales. I only follow them at the tournaments, and obviously there won't be one this year for us anyway, thanks to Dan James. (laughs) Hey, Uh, hey. He just um, wanted to concentrate on Leeds, mate. Like, zoned in on Leeds to Dan James, that's all. Yeah. He can he can score from fifty yards, but not from twelve, mate. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Keith Moore scored his pen, didn't he? Look, so he did, he did. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Keith Moore, actually. Yeah, yeah, good signing for you. Uh, is yeah. he is he out? By the way, sorry, just to go off off subject. Is he out for the season? Or I want to know this as well. About it. I hope I hope not. Um, but yeah, he's hurt his back at the. And if he doesn't walk out at Carrow Road, Norwich at twelve thirty on Saturday, I'm going to be very concerned. Yeah. When will we find out about that? When's the presser, Ben? Is it tomorrow? 
eleven thirty on Saturday, we're all going to find out about that, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, all right then, Locks. I will see you later, my man. Thank you for coming on, mate, and giving up some time. Yeah, I've, I've been um, on the channel a lot recently. I think I'm going to start paying rent, mate. So yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate. Catch you in a bit. All Cheers, right, lads. Take Thanks care, bud. Cheers, right, bye, bye, bye. Right, let's uh, let's talk young player of the year. That's too close, isn't it? Uh, I don't like that close. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll stick my, me in my the My beard went very grey all of a sudden, yeah, yeah, Joe, yeah. didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Um, right, okay, so Locks, um, yeah, Locks has, has dipped, but Somerville's 79% of the vote. I think, listen, for me, it's a, it's a toss-up between Somerville and Dewsbury Hall, although I do take um, what, what, what Ben said on board, uh, you know, about his impact at Blackburn is probably... Uh, much bigger um, than than those two at our clubs. Um, right, okay. So let's talk about the young uh, player of the year. Which nominations are Archie Gray, Johnny Rowe of Norwich, and Jordan James um, at Birmingham City. Um, I think they're all top players. Um, I think Johnny Rowe for a period of time. I don't know. I don't. Is he injured now? Because he didn't. Play against It's been out since February. Right. Okay. Because he was flying for a period oh, of time. Yes, yes he was. Yeah. Um, and even when I've seen Birmingham play in the games against those in the top four and against those, I thought Jordan James was good. Of course, listen, I can't see past Archie Gray. Me, it's hard for me to even consider anybody, like because I think he's he's that good. Um, he's just phenomenal, and I think he'll win this. Genuinely, I think he'll win it at a counter, but. Lucky before I come to you, I'm gonna have to go to Ben because obviously Ben's gonna give us, you know, yeah. a bit more knowledge yeah. on the others, I would imagine, having seen them a lot more than us and can say more um than the odd game that I've seen these players in. But I do know Johnny Rose had a fantastic season. Jordan James is, is different gravy. And I think Jordan James has been linked to some some big clubs as well, to be fair. But yeah. Ben, what what's your thought on this trio? Yeah, so I think it would have been Johnny Rowe if he'd not got injured and he'd kept, I think he was on 12 goals at that point. And yeah. if he was going to go above 15 goals, as one of the lads said earlier, it always favours the attacking mm -hmm. players. But I don't think he's he, he can win because he's not going to complete the the whole season. Um, I've got some honourable mentions. Um, if the rules were a bit relaxed, I looked up, I think I'm right, Jorginho Ruta only turns 22 at the end of this month. So he's actually 21 for most of the season, but wouldn't count. And I would definitely have him as over yeah. Archie Gray. We'll talk about Archie yeah. Gray in, in a minute. But, you know, you talk about um, the season he's had. Uh, Joe Bellingham for Sunderland, I think, has done really well. I think he's played nearly 40 games. Um, Ryan Andrews, who's a fullback at Watford. Um, I know, obviously, you're in direct comparison then with, with Gray, who's played at right back. And there's two lads at Bristol City, Tommy Conway and yeah, Sam right, Bell, I think, have been Bell, good play. really good as well. Um, so for me, it's between Gray and James. And I'm almost a bit disappointed because if Gray had played in central midfield all season, like I hoped he was mm. going to, like he did against Ipswich in that game at the start of the season, this would be an absolute landslide. And I would be saying, yes, you know, Archie Gray all the way. But... I don't know, there's a, there's a bit of a sense that I think Archie Gray will will win just because he's so young and he's played right at the top of the table and out of position. I just uh, remember when Sessegnon, I think Sessegnon didn't even get the young player of the year. He got the actual player of the year for Fulham nice. and he was on the left wing just causing absolute havoc. So, um, yeah, I think Gray will win, but there's almost a tinge of disappointment. And I understand why Daniel Farke has gone with um, seasoned international midfielders mm. and and two of them in Griff and uh, Kamara and I think Gray's done a fantastic job at right back. It just would have been a spectacular win if he played central midfield all season. And yeah, fair due to um, Jordan James, who's played all sorts of positions in a four-two-three-one shape. He's played sort of one, two, three, four, five uh, positions, and he's going to be a real important asset in FFP land. I think for for Birmingham if they need to need to raise some money. But I think Gray will win. But do you understand my almost tinge of disappointment yeah. that he hasn't yeah, really yeah. Boss, had the chance to boss central midfield? But his time will come to do that, I think. Yeah. I think as well, like, you have to put the caveat for Jordan James in that he's played in a side that, that was managed with, 
by Wayne Rooney for a long period of time that didn't know <laughs> what it was trying to do, you know what I mean? And he still shone in them moments. So, yeah, um, yeah, he's he's a top player, and um, I think I think. Do you think you'll see all of them in the Premier League next season, Ben? Um, that's a great question. I mean, Gray's obviously the most likely because he's so yeah. far up the table, isn't he? You would think Norwich with the parachute payments running out are probably going to be selling in the summer. So that's a fair shout. Not sure about James, but he might go to a parachute. Let's send him to yeah. Burnley now, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> in <laughs> exactly. summer. That's a good point. Lucky, um, what are your thoughts mm. on, on the three that have been nominated, mate? Oh, all unbelievable good young players. Obviously, John James, actually, and then even Johnny Rove, that their type of players, if we did go up, you're looking at someone like that. You know, if you, even if you have to potentially sell on a Somerville or a Rutter to another team, you bring in someone like that, that's the type of player where you know their ceiling's so high. And I think that's, it's good to see um, all these young players because I think one thing, I think if you look at our team when we got promoted and stuff like that, there wasn't really that true breakout star. It was all about the experience and, and the stars like Pablo Hernandez. Obviously, Ben White, but he wasn't our player at that point. Jack John Clark. Fox wasn't that young. Jack Clark, well, he, he left the year we went up, didn't he? He went to, um, where did he go to? Spurs. Spurs. Spurs? Spurs. Yeah. Spurs, when, yeah. When, when, yeah, you're right, but when Jack Clark burst onto the scene, we were all completely, really excited. Oh, was that that game John. against Derby? Wow. Unbelievable, yeah. yeah. Can't believe it. Um, but then he had that. He had that issue, didn't he? Um, and mm, he didn't quite come back after yeah. that. Yeah, he had a bit of an issue there. But yeah, players like that. And for us again, Archie, great. I think it's the age for me. That these guys mm. are all young, but he's doing it two years younger than James and Johnny Rose. I think I believe he's twenty or nineteen. Archie started at seventeen. He's just turned eighteen. That's that's ridiculous for me. And the fact that yeah. he's not actually played first team football at all before this season and he, he came in straight away first game and since then he's been undroppable I think the trajectory of him as well the England trajectory is ridiculous Southgate name checking him must be an honour for him you know give him something to really believe in obviously the, the, the yeah the Bellingham stuff is crazy because I don't think you're ever going to get someone that's no. done as much as Bellingham but if, if Archie Gray can continue the way he is and become an established uh, Premier League player and a player for England then that's more than enough. We're you know. not seeing him do this in the Bernabeu in a few no. years, though. And you don't we? need do you know to. I mean? No, and, and let Jude like, have yeah, that. Yeah, that's yeah. Jude, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. what he's doing, and it's amazing to yeah, see. Yeah. But look, I'm not saying he can't, but it's no. Let's not have that expectation. Can I just chime in there? That's yeah. almost a bit of my disappointment because with Bellingham, when he was playing, obviously for a lesser team, because Birmingham were sort of halfway down the yeah. table. I remember. He was, it was Pep Clotet. Remember him? He was the Birmingham yeah, manager. Yes. And they we were kind of shoehorn him yeah. into the team on the right wing. And in the end, it's like, no, nope, stick him in central midfield. And he's running games in the yeah. championship. He scored he against was, us. He scored and he was us. massive as well, yeah. wasn't he? Like age 17. And, you know, that that's what you'd yeah. maybe on a good day in a home game, could Archie Gray from central midfield quarterback a little bit like Calvin Phillips used to for... Mm. Bielsa, that's the that would have been incredible, wouldn't it? Sorry, oh, can continue. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, no, you're right. And but that game against Chelsea, where he dominated that 300 pound midfield, yeah. was or whatever it was, ridiculous money. That because he played midfield that game, and that was the one where everyone, even Premier League teams, went, "Oh, who's this? Who's this?" Then because yeah, yeah, yeah. he was unbelievable, and it's the mental side of it as well for me with Archie Gray. And again, look, John and James. Obviously, I'm going to go for Archie Gray just because I'm a Leeds fan. But just again. The mental side of it, nothing phases him. Someone that's grown up supporting Leeds, come through the academy, the pressure of his, you know, his family, the Greys, it doesn't bother him. It, he just seems to seamlessly just go through games doing a really good job. Arguably one of our most consistent players this yep. season. For, for someone that's 17 slash 18, he's unheard of, really. And I'm just really happy and proud that we have a player. I keep saying that. People talk about he's going here, he's going there. Just enjoy him when he's here. That might be two years, it might be five, it might be ten. Enjoy him while he's here because he's an unbelievable talent. They all are. Like I said, if we went up, the young, kind of them young championship players who were ready to make that step, Jordan James and, and, and Johnny Rowe, two are 100% looking at. And I agree with Ben. Johnny Rowe didn't get that injury and continued that form 100%. He'd probably he's probably got a that. Swagger as well, Johnny yeah, yeah. Rowe. Before the last local derby, Joe, he was giving it the big one on Twitter, and you're like, 
All right, mate, mate. We'll see what you've got. Scored twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 players at back it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's a bull of that row, I tell you. Yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll go for I'll, obviously I'll go for Archie Gray, but I think generally speaking, that's not too controversial in this one. With the others, you no, can argue Player so. of the Year, but just that name check from Southgate as well at this age is mm. that must have he must have heard that and thought, oh, wow, yeah, yeah. That is that is fair. I think I think we all well eighty eight percent of the chat think Gray will win. Four percent have gone Johnny Raw, nine percent Jordan James, which is uh to to be expected. That um, doesn't surprise me, Joe. No. <laughs> before we before we drop off, Ben, I'm gonna have to ask you about this game on Saturday, mate. I know you probably mm. don't want to talk about it right now, but how how are the nerves, mate? It's been a long time since you've beaten them, but also even longer since you've beaten them at Carroll Road. Um, as a Leeds fan, I'm praying for a Norwich win. I can't lie. I'll be watching the game. How how are you feeling ahead of it? Oh, it's the worst. I mean, I don't know what your equivalent is. I guess you get a few more kind of localish games than you do kind of in the basis of there's one team in Suffolk and one team in, yeah. in Norfolk. And I think that's what the people who kind of look and sneer a bit at the East Anglian derby because we're going to yokels out on a limb in East Anglia or whatever, but you're literally county against county. So it's horrible, mate. And as much as I love doing doing this gig, can you imagine how much I get asked about it this week? And I'm talking yeah. about it all the time, getting more and more nervous about it. And like people are very kind to me, Joe, including yourself, who say, um, oh, Ben, you're really balanced. You do such a good job. And my stomach's in knots even thinking about it um I went to the to the home game Joe and there are people coming up and saying hello before and I'm like I hate this I don't want to be here this is the <laughs> this is the worst this absolutely sucks so I am extremely nervous but obviously that's the emotional football fan side of me whereas do you know what you guys might be able to see it a lot clearer than me for what's actually what's actually going to happen but look it's it's Norwich. We suck against Norwich. You know, it's been a horrible, horrible run. Um, okay, they've been they've just had way better players than us every time we've played them for you know, we've we've not really been in with much of a chance for most of the um, you know, most of the games. But even the one back in December, loads of chances in the first half and didn't take them, and then you mm. find yourself two one down. Ugh. Um so Three game week, Joe. Give me a point at Norwich, and then uh, another four or six, and we'll, we'll, we'll forget about it. But I mean, what is is it? Man United, your guys, real one that makes you feel yeah. sick. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Man United. We don't like Chelsea. Either. It's a, it's a shame because I wish there was a rivalry in Yorkshire that I really cared about, but I don't, and that's the mm. thing. It's more so from them than it is from us if that makes sense and I don't say that to be elitist or whatever but it's like that's how it is it's mad because I even in Middlesbrough it blew my mind I, I when I first moved to the northeast I lived in Teesside for a bit and I I discovered that they hate us hate us and I was like really and they were going yeah we're your rival aren't we and I were like I don't know what you're on about but yeah, um, yeah, they consider themselves North Yorkshire at the time, but I wish there was like a Yorkshire derby that that I could, because now I live in Sunderland, and when it's derby day in the northeast, you know about it weeks before, weeks before. I used to work in Sunderland, obviously, before doing this, and they're speaking about it. So you can imagine when they played each other in the FA Cup, what you're doing for derby day. You have people at work going, "Oh, I'm going out for derby day," and I'm like. You never speak about football, yeah, but it's Derby Day. You're all out for Derby Day. <laughs> so that was like a thing as well that I felt as a fan, I was like, Oh, we never really got that. And I did I did miss that. Mm. You know what I mean? I can imagine that's what it's like for like Liverpool for Everton and all them sort of Yorkshire, even like um the North London Derby, Arsenal, Spurs, etc. We don't really get that. It's across Pennine lines and we hate each other, but I don't know, sometimes when you're working with the people that you're going to be going up against, it, it, it gives a whole new... Joe, some of it's not it. fun as well, though. You yeah, yeah, turn yeah. up and it's always a police kickoff early in the day. And if you're an away fan, if you win, it's amazing. But it's you're going to get frog marched and herded in. And yeah. it's a bit it's a bit spicy. And as yeah, much yeah. as 
your Stone Island lot, you know, kind of <laughs> enjoy that stuff as long as they actually don't have to encounter yeah, another yeah, fan yeah, face to face and shout across the stage. Me, you know, I'm I'm a bit old now and I've got a kid yeah. and I'm like, nah. I, yeah, some, yeah. the whole thing is just a bit, just get it done with. But you're totally <laughs> right. It's the literally the first thing on the fixture list. Everybody's yeah, let's sc- scoot straight. But where's Norwich? Where's Norwich there? You know. <laughs> How do you think we'll fare against Coventry, mates? Uh, a lot of leads. Do you think that's your it. hardest game? I think so. Yeah, away from home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I sure. don't want to spoil my predictions with Sam Parkin on the excellent Championship Checking yes. Podcast, which is going to be out tomorrow. Um, I think it's going to be a tight one. I think they could draw with you, but I think you might nick it by a goal. I, I, hope I so. and what a. Again, it's a big weekend for Ipswich and Leeds because it's probably Leeds' hardest game, isn't it, at Coventry? I and Ipswich so. is certainly psychologically and emotionally Ipswich's hardest yeah. game, you know. So it's a real big weekend, isn't it? Yeah, because I, I am worried about Leicester because their next three is um, Birmingham, Millwall and Plymouth. Nine points for me, that. I know no, it's not as Joe, easy as that, but... No, Rowett is going to park the bus... And Millwall mm. is Millwall. Millwall can score yeah, two true. set plays against anyone. True. Let's hope I wouldn't that's be. The case. I wouldn't be so sure about about that. Oh, I hope you're right, mate. I hope you're right. I'm, um, mate, I'm never. I'm never right. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I hate to say it, but I hope Norwich beat Ipswich, and I hope Leicester lose and we win, and then you know we can relax a little bit because it's getting very nervy. But um, you don't need. You don't need both. Ipswich and <laughs> Leicester to lose. That'd be so ridiculous. Just 3D wants it all. He wants it. Yeah, yeah. It's no, real. I would love Ipswich to go up. Like it's very genuinely. selfish. Yeah. 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 I would love Ipswich to go up, just not at the we expense could, we, of my. We could win, game. Ben. We could win the game, right? All right. We could win three points, and then Leicester could get a point or something. Or Ipswich would get a point, and Joe be. Oh, I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. It's fine. We won, Joe. Don't worry about very it. narcissistic, isn't it? And selfish. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Right, folks, we'll leave it there. Thank you, everyone, for, for tuning in. Sorry it wasn't sort of like uh, people. It took a while for us to get a few in, but naturally it went up and then we were live straight away. That's my fault for falling asleep. But uh, I've had a busy day because it's the school holidays, as you know. So, yeah. Anyway, um, please smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, and of course, hit the notification bell. Make sure you check out the amazing Benjamin Bloom, as he's just told you, the championship checking podcast will be with you tomorrow so make sure you check out that Lockie leads as well Lockie, have you got art out this week or are you still on uni stuff uh no i, I did a video the other day there's that coming up um i probably won't do one till i love you York. have you got out out two different usages <laughs> of the word out try and explain that to a non-english speaker it's genius that joe amazing got, oh ow. i love that <laughs> From, from this like little Suffolk like. boy over here. I love that. Amazing. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> you understood it, didn't you, Lockie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got a review stuff. of the last two games. Up. I did it all in one. Um, and, and the current yeah. squad, like the, uh, the um, injuries and all that stuff, I've done the updates. Good stuff. Make sure you check it out, folks. All always uh, great content with Lockie. It takes a lot of time and a lot of pride in his work, so make sure you check it out. And, um, yeah, we will, uh, we will leave it there. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice evening. Peace out now. Oh, oh.